Hello everyone. This video is going to be about DynamoDB pagination and I'm going to show you hands-on exactly how to do it using a Lambda function. So just as a reminder, pagination is the feature that you see a lot in popular apps like Instagram or Twitter uh, that basically powers the infinite scroll feature on those websites. So as you continuously scroll down over and over again, you're just continuously loading more data. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that in DynamoDB here. And just as a reminder of how it works in DynamoDB, this is a screen grab of my previous video about how pagination works. I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, but basically how pagination works in DynamoDB is you make your initial query and you set your exclusive start key to null. You perform your query, you get a list of results back. In this case, we got back T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. And then you also get back a last evaluated key. The next time you make a query, you pass in that last evaluated key and you get another set of results back. When the last evaluated key is null, that's how you know that you no longer need to perform any more queries. In a sense, it's basically saying, I'm done. There's no more data to query on. Uh, so that's how pagination works. So let's see how it works in the context of Dynamo. So here we have a countries table. And in this countries table, we have a country name and a state with a country name being the partition key and the state being the range key. Also have some data here. This is just a blob of a random assortment of JSON um, values that I gathered from a website, and this becomes more important later. Uh, so you may be wondering to yourself, we only have you know five or six records here. How is pagination even possible? Um, because this is just a, such a small number of records. Shouldn't one query just return everything? And if you made that assumption, you would be incorrect. And the reason is, is because the DynamoDB has a one megabyte maximum query page size. So for instance, if you query on USA, and the number of rows matched exceed one megabyte, you will only get one megabyte worth of rows. So say for instance, if the first row plus the second row plus the third row plus the fourth row equals one megabyte worth of data, you'll get these four records back in your first query and the fifth one back on your second query. Um, just as a reminder, each row as well has a 400 kilobyte limit. Um, so if you have three rows, the 400 kilobytes, you'd only ever get back two at a time because three rows is 1.2 megabytes. So that's kind of what we're working with here. So let's move over to Lambda now, where we're gonna be making our queries and see this in action. Uh, so going over to Lambda in the console now. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to the top right here and click on create function. Click on that guy. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna call this Lambda function query demo. And runtime, we're gonna be using Python 3.8. And for permissions, I'm gonna use an existing role that I set up and it's my DynamoDB query role. Uh, so this role has the DynamoDB query permission. So if you're setting this up for the first time, make sure the IAM role that you're using has the DynamoDB query permission or it has full access. Uh, just make sure that it has that particular one or else you get a access denied error later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create function now. Uh, that was actually pretty quick. Usually that takes a little while. Uh, so let's move on to the next step where is where we actually write the code. Um, so I'm gonna grab this stuff and move it over into Visual Studio Code. Just plop that in there really quick. Uh, and I have up here the IAM uh, permission that you're gonna need. It's DynamoDB query permission. Make sure your role has that when you're doing this or else you'll get a, um, I believe it's an access denied permission error when you run your function. Um, so let's take out some of this jazz. We're gonna need to do a couple of imports. We're gonna need the sys library so I can see the size of objects. It'll be re uh, relevant a little bit later on. Also need Bodo3. And from Bodo3, uh, dynamodb.conditions, I want the uh, key and attribute uh, so I can refer to them in shorthand a little bit later on in the video. So the first thing we want to do is kind of establish a resource using the Bodo3 library. So we're gonna say Bodo3.resource and that is called DynamoDB. And so the second thing now is we need to kind of get a pointer to the table that we wanna query on. So we're gonna say is equal to DynamoDB.table. And my table was called countries. Um, obviously yours is probably gonna be different. So make sure you swap this out if you're repeating this exercise. And by the way, I'm gonna be making this code available in the description section below. So don't worry about copying this out, uh, save yourself the trouble. Um, so the next thing, I just wanna kind of assign a temporary variable to, to query count and just set that to one. It'll be more uh, important later on. And now we're ready to make our initial query. So make initial query. Uh, so we want to say response is equal to table dot query. And we're gonna say key condition expression is equal to key. 
going to be using that shorthand and we want the country name we want to query on country name and we want that key to be equal to usa so effectively what this is saying is perform a query uh, and make it such that the rows fetched are such that the country name is equal to usa uh, that's what we're saying here so now we want to extract the results extract the results and so we're going to get the items out of the response. Um, so the items in JSON array format are in the items key of the response object. So just extracting that out. Now we have a reference to a list of items. So we're going to say for item in items. And we now can effectively print out the content of the item. But let's make a couple shorthand variables here just to uh, make our life easier. So let's say country name is equal to item. Uh, country name. We're going to say state is item state, state sate. And um, we're not going to print out the data because we don't really need that. Uh, but I actually do want to see the size of this row, the size in kilobytes of this row. And for that, I'm going to use the sys.getSize of function and I'm going to pass that the item. So this is going to give us the number of kilobytes in integer form of the item row. So now we're pretty much ready to print everything out uh, just to take a look at what we have. So let's say print, um, I wanna see the query count actually. So um, set that there, we gotta convert it to integer. Let's just make a little delimiter here, have a, a dash in between every uh, kind of field so we can read this a little bit easier. Uh, now we wanna say plus country name and again a delimiter and then plus uh, state and again a delimiter and then plus uh, string size. And that looks good. Let's just go over what we did here really quick. So we established a uh, DynamoDB resource. We created a table and it's pointing to our countries table. Uh, we make our initial query here where the country name is equal to USA. We acquire all the items from the response and we iterate over the items, uh, extract some variables, get the size, and then print everything out in a nice neat little format. So let's just copy all this stuff and just do a little quick test run in uh, Lambda here just to make sure we don't have any syntax errors or anything. Um, so let's create an event, whatever we want and click on test, hopefully this works. Okay, succeeded, where's the logs? Okay, uh, so we see the results down here and this is kind of what I was talking about a little bit before. Um, we have a number of records now that are being re retrieved. Uh, recall that we actually have five records. Uh, we have a USA Washington record uh, that also has data in it. But notice here that we're only getting the four results back. Uh, so this can be a little bit confusing for some folks. They think, hey, I performed my query, I should get everything back. Uh, but if you notice here kind of what's happening, um, the fifth row as well is 232 kilobytes. And if we add all of these up, then that is just under 1000. So the next row, if it were added to this query, would exceed, exceed 1000, which is the one megabyte limit for a single query. So that's why we're not getting back the fifth row here, just getting back the initial four. So that's kind of pagination in action. Uh, so in order to get everything back, we need to do kind of a couple bunch of extra steps um, to, to get the remainder of the results. So let's go ahead and do those extra steps now, just scroll down a little bit. Um, so we performed our initial query here, that's gonna stay the same. Uh, and we're gonna keep all this stuff, but we're just gonna do some copying and pasting just to make this a little bit easier. Um, so after I made this initial query, I want to increment my query count um, because we already performed the first one, so let's add one to that. And so the next step is to use the last evaluated key in the response to set that to our exclusive start key. Um, because that's the token that we're gonna pass into our subsequent queries. So we can tell Dynamo, hey, this is where I left off on my first query. Uh, give me everything after this query. Uh, so the remainder of the results. If that didn't make sense, it'll make sense in a second here. Um, so we're gonna use a while loop and let's say while last evaluated key is in the response. First, I wanna just print out a delimiter just so we can see what's happening. And then uh, we want to set a key value to be the last evaluated key, so we can refer to it later. Okay, so now our key is set to the last evaluated key. And now we're just gonna grab this guy up here and pretty much do the same thing with a slight modification. Um, so we're gonna perform this query as well. 
And the modification is that we need to set a second value here. Uh, we set key condition expression first. Uh, now when we're doing pagination, we need to set the exclusive start key value. So exclusive start key to be equal to that last evaluated key, right? So key is equal to the response last evaluated key. Then we wanna set the exclusive start key of our next query to the last evaluated key of the previous query. So this is just kind of like a daisy chain. Every time you make a query, you take a look at the last evaluated key. If it's there, you use it as your exclusive start key for your next query. So that's kind of what's going on here. Um, so let's move on to the next part where we're just basically gonna print out everything again. So let's take everything from line 20 down and over here, go down here, and we're just gonna paste that, right? And the indent broke, of course. Uh, so now we're gonna be performing uh, multiple queries here, potentially more than one, two, three, all, all the queries that we need in order to get all the data back. Um, and again, we need to increment our query count after we do everything here. And again, once this loop exits, I want to print a another delimiter just to like kind of indicate that we're done here. Um, so let's just go through this again, just to see kind of what we did. So scrolling back up, we set the table, make our first query, print out the items. Pretty straightforward. Then we take a look at the last evaluated key in the response. And while it's still there, we want to extract it out, perform a query using that last evaluated key. If I can scroll over and show you. Uh, and set the exclusive start key to that last evaluated key. And then again, we're gonna kind of iterate over the items in the uh, response, increment our counter so we can keep track of everything correctly and just print out delimiter. That's, that's all we're doing here. So what we should see here is we should be performing multiple queries and because we were printing out the query count at the beginning, we'll see kind of a batch of items that are, re are returned as part of the first query. And then we should see what's left over returned as part of the second query. Uh, so let's take all this again, do the same exercise, copy that, paste that, uh, scroll up to the top, click on test, please no error, please no error. Yes, no error. Um, and so, and so, okay, that does not look right. Okay, I've, I'm duplicating the same rows. So this probably means there's something wrong with my output. Uh, what did we do here? Oh, you know what? We never reassigned um, items. So it's just printing the items from up here. So we just need to say items equal to uh, response items. Okay, so that should correct that. Oops, sorry about that, folks. Paste that in again and click save. Let's give that another whirl and see what we got. Okay, there we go. So we get the first four rows back as part of the first query, and we see the second row back coming as part of the second query. Uh, so this kind of shows you pagination in action. One of the other interesting things you can do is you can kind of set a limit on the amount of records that you're retrieving. Uh, so say for instance, if I add a extra uh, value here and say limit is equal to one on this query, and then uh, limit is equal to one on this query as well. What we're effectively saying here is, is kind of perform queries in batches of one. So one item per query. Uh, obviously this is probably a bad idea, um, but you can kind of control the amount of rows that you want to uh, return back at most. Um, so this always means at most. So of course it's gonna adhere to the same rules as um, the previous scenarios where we saw you can only re retrieve one megabyte worth of data. Um, so let's click on save now, try that again. We should see the same thing, but we should see one, two, three, four, five being incremented because one query per item. Test that out. And that's exactly what we got. So we have five different queries that I performed on the table. And for every one, we're printing out the items. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll put another one in the top right here about DynamoDB schema design. Uh, also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.